Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. I found something tonight that I really wanted to discuss with you briefly, and that is the Puma Punku in Western Bolivia. Now, this site is said to date back to roughly the sixth century. However, it appears that it could be much older than that. And this was something that was revered by the Incan culture. Now, when we look at Puma Punku, it is essentially an earth mound that is reinforced by megalithic stone blocks. And there are three levels of these stone blocks or these stone walls that reinforce Puma Punku. Now, Puma in this name refers to a cougar or a puma, a large cat. And Punku is another word for a door or a gate which I found very interesting when we begin to look at some of these objects that have been found in Puma Punku. They look very much like stargates and other things that we see represented in mainstream culture. The real doozy here and the real meat and potatoes of this video and why I want to share this information with you is because some of these megalithic stone blocks that we see on these ancient ruins of Puma Punku are very much appearing to be manufactured or they appear to be created in a way that could not have been done with a hand chisel by man without any sort of advanced tools. We're talking about perfectly cut pieces of stone. But besides that, when I say perfect, I mean perfect to the T. There is not even really a centimeter or a millimeter of error in any of these blocks. But furthermore, in this design, these blocks were actually created to interlock with one another so they could be used interchangeably, meaning that one block, essentially, if it somehow would break, could be replaced with another block that was already created because they were all exactly the same shape and design. Essentially, these are joints that were created to fit with one another so that these megalithic blocks could be placed on top of one another to create this massive structure of Puma Punku. Diving into Puma Punku just a little bit further, we are also told that the complex of Puma Punku is complete with an underground courtyard or many layers of underground courtyards, underground connecting areas, which I found to be very fascinating. Now, this whole complex is sitting in Western Bolivia and Puma Punku as a complex is essentially a geometrical alignment of plazas, ramps, reinforced stone walls that are centered around the massive Puma Punku platform mound. It is a monumental complex on top of a mound that now sits basically completely in ruins. Now, even though Puma Punku seems to remind us of other similar complexes that we see being found throughout the world, we are actually told that the architectural style officially of Puma Punku is the Puma Punku style, meaning that it is unmimicked or unmatched worldwide. The first European visitor and the first to document Puma Punku was Pedro Cieza de Leon. Now, the Puma Punku site, when it was first discovered, was said to be full of both full-size archways and miniature gateways which interconnected the Puma Punku complex both above and below ground. As we look at Puma Punku today, much of it appears to be in ruins and much of the glory that was written about in the earliest accounts of this area seem to be lost in the modern day photographs. But when we see interpretations of what this complex could have looked like, 
it is very fascinating to say the least. Now, modern scholars will tell us that Puma Punku, when it was at its peak, when it was at its finest, was complete with polished metal plaques everywhere, depicting the gods and the deities and different important things. We also had statues depicting the same things. There were ceramic tiles which surrounded basically the whole area of Puma Punku. The streets were paved or tiled and we also have fabric ornamentation that seemed to hang from every single building in the area. Now again, Puma Punku was very interesting because of these perfectly created angles. We are told most of this complex was created in the 500s and the 600s, at least according to the quote, scientific carbon dating that was done. However, when we look at the complexity of these different blocks and how perfect, literally perfect the angles would have to be for these buildings to fit together as they did, it really becomes confounding to try and understand how this was done. You can see here, every single one of these blocks, which has been sitting here basically undisturbed for almost 1500 years. And this place has gone through a large portion of destruction and a lot of it is still in ruins. And yet the blocks, the massive pieces that were created are still holding up to time. They can still be tested. They are still level. The angles are still perfectly at 90 degrees, and I find that to be absolutely fascinating. Now, as we dive into a final few facts about this area of Puma Punku, I also wanted to show you this amazing structure. This is the Gate of the Sun. Now, this was constructed out of one solid block, and it was carved, and it was found basically destroyed. Now, it was renovated or put back together, and it still is very much beautiful and very much reminds us of the old world. What's fascinating is that many modern day scholars now believe that this Gate of the Sun was actually part of the larger Puma Punka complex, basically stating that the Puma Punku complex could have encompassed many many miles of different buildings, structures, roadways, and archways. What makes these advanced building techniques or these advanced masonry techniques so confusing is because this entire complex of Puma Punku is considered to be severely misunderstood, partially due to its age, to the lack of Inca records, to the structures themselves being in ruins and due to years of looting and shockingly it's also noted in the narrative that much of puma punku was destroyed throughout time in part for building stone and in part for railroad ballast now as we look into this absolutely massive area of puma punku one thing that comes to mind when I read this narrative is we're told there's only roughly two hecta acres of this overall complex that has been unearthed so far and it's an estimated 17 hecta acres or more that is still buried underground. Now part of the Puma Punku is the platform Lytica and this is said to include one of the largest stone blocks in all of Puma Punku, measuring 26 feet by 17 feet, weighing an estimated 131 tons or 144 short tons. And this is one solid block that was basically quarried and then carried to this area. Now, we are told there were three separate major building epochs in the area of Puma Punku. And they were built mainly of the highly rare material andesite, which is a form of volcanic rock, and also built mainly out of red sandstone. Now, 
The red sandstone is said to have come from over six miles away and it was carried up a steep mountainside from nearby Lake Titicaca. Even crazier, the andesite was quarried over 56 miles away across Lake Titicaca and then returned to Pumapunku over the lake. The blocks of Pumapunku are said to be so finely cut that they literally defy all scientific explanation at this point, especially when we consider the time period they were said to be constructed in. But rather than sharing my own scientific explanation for what this says, I'm going to quote two separate scientific journals describing this block work that is entirely in Pumapunku, basically the whole region, whether it's underground block work, above ground block work, block work that is in ruins, all of it was built in this same super advanced, super perfectly angled down to literally the centimeter. So I'm just going to read these articles for you and Hopefully, it'll give you a better understanding of just how advanced this area really is. To obtain the smooth finishes, the perfectly planar faces, and exact interior and exterior right angles on the finely dressed stones, they resorted to techniques unknown to the Incas and to us at this time. The sharp and precise 90 degree interior angles observed on various decorative motifs most likely were not made with hammer stones no matter how fine the hammer stones point it could never produce the crisp right interior angles seen on tia hawanako stonework comparable cuts in inca masonry all have rounded interior angles typical of a pounding technique. The construction tools of the Tihawanakas, with perhaps the possible exception of hammer stones, remain essentially unknown and have yet to be discovered. And here is a second quote. In assembling the walls of Pumapunku, each stone was chiseled and honed to interlock with the surrounding stones. The blocks were fit together like a puzzle forming load-bearing joints. Jean-Pierre Prodzen and Stella Nair identified a 1 to 1.5 millimeter thick, thin coat of whitish material covering some of the stones as a possible layer of mortar. One common engineering technique involves cutting the top of the lower stone at a certain angle and placing another stone on top of it, which was cut at the same angle. The precision with which these angles create flush joints is indicative of sophisticated knowledge of stone cutting and thorough understanding of descriptive geometry. Many of the joints are so precise a razor blade cannot fit between the stones. Much of the masonry is characterized by accurately cut rectilinear blocks of such uniformity they could be interchanged for one another while maintaining a level surface and even joints. Although similar, the blocks do not have the same dimensions. The precise cuts suggest the possibility of prefabrication or mass production, technologies far in advance of their time. So I think I'm just going to wrap the video up there. As per usual, I would love to hear what you think about this area down below. Puma Puku. Basically, we have megalithic stone blocks. We have archways that are created out of massive single stone blocks. But furthermore, we have stone blocks that are built into this complex and blocks that are still buried underground and undiscovered that are said to be well over 100 tons and these were said to have been hauled all across basically the area of bolivia 
and across Lake Titicaca just to make this monumental construction possible. Now, different scholars have estimated that this construction could have taken thousands of years. However, according to when the cultures really thrived here, we may never know exactly how this was created. But I just wanted to end on this artistic rendition, artistic depiction of what Puma Punku could have looked like or probably did look like at its prime when it was at its peak. And it very much looks like many of the ancient Indian temples we see all throughout the Middle East and into Asia. So it's interesting if we're talking about a one world culture or an old ancient advanced civilization and we keep seeing these similar buildings popping up everywhere, we at least must question the narrative a little bit. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below about Puma Punku, and we'll talk very soon on the next video.